Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about moving average division for the price of Bitcoin. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Is there anything better than waking up to Bitcoin moving average division? I don't think so. So let's jump in to long-term moving average division for the price of Bitcoin. So we've looked at this before on the channel, so we just want to do a, a little bit of an update here. This, These lines show the 50-week, the 100-week, and the 200-week moving averages for the price of Bitcoin. And interestingly enough, as we head into bear markets, they all play an important role. The 50-week tends to be our, our, our bouncing area for the price of Bitcoin if it dumps below the 20-week moving average. So we typically see a bounce there. It's typically short-lived, though. And then we go to the 100-week moving average, which is where we chop sideways for a bit before ultimately dumping down to the final 200-week moving average, which historically is where we hold support. Now, this is great and all, but are there any useful things from these moving averages that we can learn as they relate to one another. So the first thing we can look at is what if we take the 100 week moving average, which is the orange line, and divide it by the 200 week moving average, which is the pink line. If you do that, this is what you get. It's a pretty interesting curve and you can see that the amplitude here is decreasing. And and one of the one of the things that this would tell you is that at the peak, so if you look at the peak, so the peak separation of the 100 week and the 200 week moving averages, peak separation has been reducing from one cycle or from, you know, from, from 2014, because we, we don't really have every single cycle shown on this because it's looking at 100 and 200 week moving averages, which take a long time to, to get in the first place. But you can see that over the macro scale, the separation of the two moving averages at the peak is becoming less, okay, it's becoming less. And then also at the bottom, they're not getting, so far they haven't been getting qu quite as close to each other, probably because people are, are recognizing what's going on and they're like, okay, I'm gonna front run this before everyone else starts jumping back on board. If you look though, unfortunately for moving averages, they're lagging indicators, okay? So uh, something like this is not necessarily so useful for identifying peaks, okay? If you look at where this one peaked, it actually it actually peaked right before the dump, right before it, okay? Over here, it peaked around, it's hard to really see, but it, it looks like it did it somewhere in this area. So historically, when you see this peaking, the, the 100 week divided by the 200 week, well, it has, it has previously indicated that good times are not immediately ahead for the price of Bitcoin. On the other hand, at the bottom, when we're at the bottom, historically, it means that good times are ahead for the price of Bitcoin. Unfortunately, we only have one, da we only have one data point to look at. So... That's not necessarily something you can take to the bank. It's not financial advice by any means, but historically, once you put in the bottom, it doesn't show the actual bottom, but putting in the bottom for the 100 week divided by the 200 week moving averages last time yielded pretty a pretty nice move over the next, uh, over the next year or so. Now that we're here, the question is, well, are we going to move up this quickly? like we did last cycle. And unfortunately, we just simply do not know yet. We've only just turned around. If you if you look here at the, the turnaround point, it literally just turned around in October. And this one turned around in October and ultimately peaked two years later, which brought in the bear market. We don't know how long this one will take to ultimately peak, uh, but this will be one more tool that we can use when we see this getting back up close and, and, and coming around wherever it happens, whether it happens in 12 months or say 24 months or five months, you know, wherever it ends up happening, at least it can be one more tool that we can use. So 
here we are at the bottom. The question is, well, how long, how long will it take us to ultimately trend up? One thing we could theoretically do is look at trend angles. Of course, these will be dependent on the aspect ratio you use. That one's about 65 degrees. Uh, this one has started off at about 58 degrees, but it's, it's hard to know yet because this one started off at a lower angle too and then ultimately accelerated because the price of Bitcoin more or less was moving up monotonically if you look at say monthly candles. Not completely, but it, it was moving up fairly substantially over that market cycle. So this hopefully will be one more tool that we can use to identify you know, the, the convergence of, of the moving average division. Because if this trend continues to play out, then maybe we see something like this where ultimately they, they trend closer and closer in, in, a manner, in a manner like this, where, whereas the peaks, the separation at the peaks get less as macro volatility reduces for the price of Bitcoin, but also people front run what they consider to be the bottom because they've seen it before. So ultimately, it will probably converge in on, on some value if this trend were to simply continue. The other thing we like to look, we can look at is, well, what if we take the 50 week and divide it by the 200 week? Okay, that's something we can also look at. So this one is the, is the 50 week moving average divided by the 200 week moving average. And you see something similar, uh, although it is, it, you know, it has a few more kinks in it, but it makes sense because we're looking at a 50 week moving average, not something, um, you know, much longer where we can, where we can, you know, more easily identify macro level trends. But if you were to just draw a line, you can see it's generally decreasing here. And what happened at these tops, it ultimately yielded here a further depreciation of the price of Bitcoin. And here at the other peak, it was also right before further depreciation of the price of Bitcoin. And at the bottom, it was more or less right after the bull market started. And so far, you can see that this cycle has been a little bit more choppier than prior cycles because it started to increase after the 2019 run. We, we, you know, we started increasing again, uh, but ultimately we dipped back down and have started moving back up. So maybe this will be useful in the sense of if we see it back at this level at some point where we expect you know volatility to be decreasing they likely won't reach separations quite like this because we, we've experienced diminished volatility maybe it'll be a good sign that maybe the price of bitcoin is not in for immediate um, positive price movement but in fact the opposite right now we're at the lower range of these bands which leads me to believe that in the grand scheme of, of the market cycle we're still relatively early on. Obviously, short-term corrections can happen and you need to be prepared for that. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Also, check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Finally, we do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. If you guys like the content, remember to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.